In today's Gardener's Toolbox, it's about to get noisy in Illinois. A rare double batch of cicadas are coming for the first time in 221 whopping years. That's so hard to believe. They may be loud and annoying, but Bob Bertog is here to explain how to deal with the bugs and why they are important to the overall environment. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really intrigued Thanks, by this segment. So let's first define which the broods are that are coming in. You have two broods that normally pair up about every 200 years. You have brood 19, which is a 13-year cicada, and then you have brood 13, which is a 17-year cicada. It's a little confusing, but uh, those are the two broods that are kind of emerged. The fact that it's been so much warmer, we expected them to emerge about April, the last week of April. I think they're going to push it forward a little. Because I of mean, the weather? Because it's of the nicer. weather. The war it's based on the temperature of the yeah, soil. Yeah, right. All right, uh, so riddle me this. They've been underground Seven? for this entire time. Yes. A and the harsh winters don't destroy their eggs. No, because they're... By and large. They're about two... Well, they're actually in a nymph stage, so they're actually living. They're not eggs. So they're actually living on the roots of the trees underneath the ground about two feet below the That's ground. That's the thing, science behind that is just incredible. And how they all know to come out in the 17 years is beyond right? me. I can't figure that one out either. All right, if So you then would. they emerge, and then when they come out, is they, this is their larval state. Mm -hmm. This is the shell casing of, a, of the cicada. And they emerge okay. out of that, and then they're technically instantly adults. Because so then they like have- it's like a cocoon, yeah. more or less? And well, you can see the feet too. So they come uh -huh. out, they crawl up the tree, about halfway up the tree, they emerge as adults. Okay. And you see, then they've considered adults because they have their wings. This is about the size of the cicada, actually. Mm -hmm. I have some models here which can gross people out, but you do see some bigger ones. These are models, so they're not, <laughs> you're not going to get too freaked out by you it. You will freak people out if right. they come in and moss like that. So <laughs> They'll be running for the hills, Bob. So actually, when we talked about it being so noisy, one of the things that people always talk about is, how can I be outside with them? Uh -huh. Well, just to put it in perspective, uh, they can be up to 100 decibels in, in sound. If you have a lawnmower, a gas lawnmower running th in three feet is 90 decibels. So they can, they can be louder than that. So I can always recommend some Bose noise canceling headphones. And it's a chorus of them too. Yes. I mean, there's tons out there singing at the same time. And now I didn't believe this, but where the noise comes from, it's called a timble. The timble. I didn't believe it at first, you know, cymbal, timble. Uh -huh. But that is, that is true, that's what it comes from. And it is the males that sing. It's not the no females. No kidding. Yes. Does it come from their wings or their corpus or their body? It's actually on the, up by the thorax. Up okay. there. There's a little covering, and it's called a timbal. And, the, and only the guys do that? Only the guys do is it. Is that their mating call? It is. Okay. And then what the females do is then, after they mate, then females will lay eggs. This is where some damage comes into play. Little tricky little fruit. devils there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what they do is that they'll lay eggs on the underside of branches. And I kind of just did this with a razor blade just to get a feel for mm -hmm. it. But what happens is the tree saying, okay, now I have an injury. Now I have to protect that injury. It's spring. I still got to feed the tree. I'm just going to let these wither and die. So it's not going to bud. Well, right? it, it, no, this will have happened after the tree bud. All right, so but then it's... the tree saying, okay, I'm, do I fix the injury gotcha, gotcha. or do I feed the rest of the tree? That's the sacrificial lamb, so exactly. to speak. So what do you do? If you have trees, yeah. um, certain trees, like especially your apple tree, the crab apple, softer wood, the tips of maples and things, in order to protect this, what you can do is what we have here is a it's just a fabric, wow. and you can wrap your plants with it. You can get it on Amazon. Yeah. Or it's probably going to be less expensive. It's like a mosquito net. Exactly. But this year there's going to be a high demand for that. So what I suggest doing is just going to a fabric store. Really? You'll probably save a lot of money. So you don't if need you the don't do that, will, it, will they kill the tree? It could, if, especially if it's a smaller tree. Now, the females, if you look at the size of it, they're going to want to grab onto something that's a mm -hmm. little bigger. So if it's a real small branch like that, they're probably not going to go on it. But... Anything in the you know quarter inch range, they'll grab on and they'll lay their eggs. Do they have any natural predators? Like, would the squirrels be eating them? The, the, raccoons. This is, this is a feast for dogs, squirrels, raccoons. Probably fish to a certain bats. extent. Bats. Yeah, bats for sure. Yeah. So we have a bat house here. You could put one of those up if you want, or so inclined. The thing to remember, like people get really nervous about their dogs eating them, and mm -hmm. the dogs are going to get sick only because they eat too many of them. Right. They're not going to harm the dogs. They're not going to harm the squirrels. Yeah. It's really good for the whole ecosystem. And then where it helps the trees, we would talk about coriation with the turf all the time. Well, when these things emerge, you're going to have millions of holes, mm -hmm. which is going to allow for water and nutrients to percolate back down into the plants. Um, and then when the cicadas finally do die, this is one of the bad things, good and bad. They decay. Their nutrients go back down into you the soil. You bet they do. P protein. But, protein, exactly. Yeah. But as they do die, they, there is a, definitely a scent. Okay. I mean, you, you could smell them. So, so they're people, a nuisance for a little while. They're a nuisance, while. right. But four to six weeks, they're going to be a nuisance. But then 
Later in the summer, we have the annual cicada. Okay. So it's going to be a whole summer of noise and mess. I mean, your manure that you use for fertilizer, that smells too. It does. But you it say doesn't it's more pungent like, than that? Start, again, sure. I haven't seen it for 17 years. So, But yeah, I remember it being pungent. They show pictures of people in Chicago with snow shovels, actually, yeah. to get it off the sidewalks. Yes. Uh, I remember living down south was one of those years. It was insane. They were covered like uh, stadium walls. Uh, there were yeah. so many of them. And you said the noise was deafening. That's what stuck with me, the noise. It's, uh, yeah, it's just a constant hum from yeah. early in the morning till when the sun sets. But a lot of things, so people, you know, they are inquisitive, they want to know, especially kids. Kids get nervous. I found this online. It's just a simple, if your kids get scared, mm -hmm. it's, in, it's in children's terms. Yeah. Like, guys, don't worry about it. Then cicadas don't like humans. Cicadas are, don't like to come into your house. They want to stay outside, and they want to just suck on the sap of the tree. Sure. And then, you know, the natural predators are obviously going to take, take them out. And here, I don't know if, how much you can zoom in on this, but this is actually a praying mantis. Loaf. The camera right there. Yeah. And then that's an egg sack for more praying mantis. Let me see that. Okay. So what are you saying here? What's the connection? The connection is the praying mantis will eat will the cicada. Eat? Ah, not vice versa. No. The praying mantis, they're kind of high in the, yeah, on the chain there. Unfortunately, they, if, if you're a big fan of the cicada, most of them do get taken out by predators. All right. So what's the window here? What are we talking, like a month? Six weeks. For they will be, their gestation period will be six weeks. Yeah. No, we're... Again, with the soil temperatures higher than they normally are right now, I think you're going to see them last week of April. Early start. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for being here. Um, I used to have a dog that ate bumblebees and wasps. <laughs> Didn't last too long, though, because no. like you say, it'll make them sick. Exactly. Sick as a dog. Yeah, yeah <laughs> couldn't, couldn't resist. All right, get more info and tips at birdtoglandscape.com or follow them on social media. Always good to see you. Great tips. You're welcome back anytime. We'll be right back. Thanks, Patrick.